Let's take a look at the present situation by using the world map here. Uh, we're looking at a flat map. And uh, we see AO85 is covering most of Europe. It's just lost uh, Portugal and Spain here, but uh, everything else in Europe is covered as well as uh, parts of Greenland and part of Iceland. We see the CAS 4A is covering the southern part of uh, Africa. It's about 10 uh, different countries there, maybe, five, maybe seven. Uh, XW2D will also be coming in there and uh, be available. Um, CAS 4B is covering the southern uh, part of South America, as is AO91. Nothing's here at the moment, but we have XW2C, which I don't think it's going to hit uh, our area here. But uh, AO92 is going to follow this path. Uh, not follow that path, but I mean, it's showing where it is with respect to uh, my location here. That's what the uh, yellow line on McDoppler means. But that'll be a while yet. It's on the other side of the world at the moment. FO29 is covering uh, pretty much ocean and uh, Antarctica. Uh, AO7 is covering uh, Australia and New Zealand. Pixat's over in the AO92 area here in the Indian Ocean, looks like. So uh, that's pretty much, uh, oh, by, by the way, AO85 continues over here. So it does cover a good part of Russia and uh, some of the uh, other countries associated with the former so Soviet Union. So that's uh, what the situation is at this time of the day, which is uh, 1718 GMT or Universal Coordinated Time. And uh, locally, it's 1017. Uh, so just a, an idea what McDoppler uh, uh, as a uh, program will do for you. And uh, as you see, nothing's happening in the U.S. right at the moment. Uh, we can use the uh, little bar here to move ahead in time by carefully uh, dragging this forward. As you see, now it's going over the top and you can see its coverage is uh, changing here. Now it's coming down towards us. And there it's in range. And it tells me that uh, the elevation is 10 degrees, which should work in that direction with my QTH. And the azimuth is 20 degrees. And uh, the frequency is given here for the uh, downlink, which is 145.833.883. And the uplink is uh, 435.340. Now you can adjust these somewhat by using this uh, feature here on the downlink or this feature here on the uplink. And you can also use this to slide the transmit frequency up and down. So uh, those are all good features of this particular program. And then uh, AL92 doesn't really have a beacon, so if I click on beacon here I'll get zero zero because there is no beacon aside from the main uh, um, downlink frequency here at uh, 145.83883 I keep saying that um, and uh, the actual telemetry on this is actually underneath the voice at a low frequency and in low data rate so um, it's called data under voice and that's what you'd be able to receive if you have the appropriate uh, program. And if your particular radio uh, supports the low frequency uh, uh, spectrum in terms of audio coming off your detector. So there we are with AO92. Looks like it's going to be a pretty much overhead pass here. Uh, let's uh, continue it on by sliding the bar here. Yeah, see it goes pretty much directly overhead. So that would be a good pass to use with a handheld 
uh, even with its own whip antenna and certainly with a small uh, handheld beam antenna. So uh, that's an AO92 pass here. It uh, looks like it's going to be at 1754 Z uh, Zulu um, or Greenwich Mead Time or coordinate, Coordinated uh, Universal Time or Universal Coordinated Time, as the case may be, UCT. So that uh, gives you a pretty good idea. Now, if I wanted to track this particular satellite, uh, using the automatic features of my program plus the FT-91 that I have. I would click Radio Enable and the flashing green here indicates that it's giving the new updates about every second or so. And we're in mode BFM. And uh, we have full do Doppler coverage. And we can lock the VFO. So if I was to adjust this up and down or down, as the case may be, let's say I go down, I could hit that and it would keep that relationship between these two. I'm going to check up on PICSAT. This is a satellite that uh, was working. It had the beacon on and was in testing. It suddenly uh, went dark. So we should be uh, picking it up fairly uh, shortly if the beacon is working. We'll see if we hear it or not. And we'll leave the uh, gain up on the receiver here with the squelch off to see if we hear any sign of their beacon. We're not sure why the satellite went off. And uh, it does have an onboard uh, watchdog timer, but the original time it should have reset, it did not reset. So I'm not sure I expect to hear anything. Well, anyway, it doesn't sound uh, too promising, although we are at the edge of my coverage range, uh, as you can see by the map. It's not going to get any closer to me, probably, here, so I think that I'll uh, call it a no-show. I'm going to uh, look at Oscar 7, which is a satellite that's been up uh, since the 90s, maybe even earlier. Um, it's been up for a long time. It's one of the older satellites, still uh, transmits although somewhat crippled in uh, how that goes about, and the beacon's long since gone silent and so forth. But uh, this satellite is at, uh, as you can see down in the listing here, 906 miles high. And as you notice, it does have a bigger uh, footprint here than, say, AO92. Um, this is distorted, of course. These are distorted because they're getting close to the poles, and this is what happens on this kind of a projection map. But anyway, uh, point is that even when this gets up here, it probably will still cover the west coast. Um, so it'll cover all of this, plus way up to here and way down into uh, South America. It's a much bigger footprint because of the higher altitude. Notice the normal uh, uh, low Earth orbit satellites here are 232, 251, 395, 327, 327. So these are much, much lower and have a much smaller footprint. Um, so I'm just uh, using that to demonstrate. We'll uh, push this thing forward for a while and let's take a look at what it does when it gets up here. Does it make it to the West Coast or not? Yes, it does. Now, I wouldn't be able to work it because I have mountains in the way to my east and the elevation's only about uh, one and a half degrees here. I need to have at least a seven degree elevation and probably as far away as this satellite is, I'd probably need to have uh, 15 degrees or so. I can't uh, elevate my antennas 
affixed to the uh, horizon, so um, can't uh, do anything about that. But even so, I probably would not be able to see this satellite from this location. On the other side of the Santa Clara Valley, say in Cupertino or uh, Saratoga, maybe uh, even Santa Clara, they have a much lower horizon to the east because they're further from the mountains and they might be able to see this satellite at that time. So I just thought I'd demonstrate the uh, nature of the medium Earth orbit, if you wish, satellites that are up around 1,000 miles versus the low Earth orbit ones that are 200 to 400 miles typically, maybe 500 miles. Um, this, those are based basically on the fact that they go out of either a rocket that's going to the shuttle or the shuttle itself. And uh, those are in the uh, two to 300 mile uh, range above the Earth.